Hello and welcome to the video. This is a first look at some new technology from Flysky. This is the FRM302 2.4 gig long range radio. Yep, I said 2.4 gig and long range in the same breath. Uh, along with some new receivers, this gives you the ability to push your distance and also potentially reduce your latency uh, over other 2.4 gig systems. Now normally when I'm talking about long ranges, things like Crossfire and others, typically talking about systems that are using 915 or 868 megahertz, much lower frequencies, and those lower frequencies will propagate further on the same amount of power. So it's odd, potentially, to be talking about a longer range radio system running 2.4. But in this video, what I want to do is kind of run through what I've initially found, I only have this in a couple of days and kind of playing with it here and also gather all the questions that you've got to try and work out in my testing along with getting back to Flysky as many of the answers as I possibly can. So how are they managing to get this extra range and how much range are we talking about? There's two or three things that they've done in here to give them the extra range. The first is they're using a Semtec SX 1281 2.4 gig LoRa chip in here. Now these LoRa chips are not exclusive to Flysky. They've been around for a while on AliExpress and other places. So I'm surprised it's taken somebody as long as this to think about incorporating one into a module, but Flysky have beaten others to the punch. That LoRa technology gives this radio an edge over some of the other traditional radios that are running on 2.4, which help with distance. Other thing that's helping with distance is the fact that this will run up to 2 watts. There's external power at the bottom, along with the USB, so you can do firmware updates, but more about that in a second. And there also there is the optional antenna here. Uh, this is the Flysky orientation antenna, the thing that's shaped a little bit like a wacky Christmas tree. So along with 2 watts, this antenna, and the new protocol and receivers with that LoRa technology, uh, they have published, Flysky have published a couple of videos where they're showing 50 kilometer ranges. However, you can get very significant distances on much lower power where you wouldn't have to use the external adapter at the bottom. So let me run through what I figured out already. Uh, firmware updates are available through the USB port at the bottom. I think the idea is, is there's gonna be some kind of Flysky update program on the computer Sounds familiar, that doesn't it? But at the moment, it's via discrete code. Um, there's a little bind button on here with a little circle of light that shows you the status. RP SMA connector at the top and a standard JR connector at the back. So this will fit in any JR bay. It talks to the radio in two different ways. Uh, the first is using a UART mode that gives you sub 10 millisecond response times. Unfortunately, that mode is only available uh, right now on things like this. This is a Paladin radio from Flysky. Uh, this actually is a beautiful radio. I might do more videos on this in the future. I've got the JR Bay adapter in the back of this. And with a module in the back of here, I can run this at the lower latency settings. So it's kind of like the CRSF. Uh, settings in something like Crossfire. Unfortunately, that right now isn't supported in non-Flysky radios. Uh, to use this, you'd have to set OpenTX or whatever it is you're putting it into PPM mode, which does mean that it'll fit in any radio, but that's gonna increase the latency and also take away the ability to do things like receive telemetry as well. However, that is something going on in OpenTX to add the support for this module directly into OpenTX. So we'll have to see what that actually means. Unfortunately, FR Sky have been putting slow inverters into their radios for a very long time now. See all my Crossfire videos about that debacle. Hopefully that means that uh, this will still be able to run at full speed in FR Sky radios, but it's definitely going to be able to run at full speed in obviously radios from 
fly sky things like the paladin also things like the nirvana as well um but also things like the radio master and the jumper radios that put full speed inverters in there uh, they should be absolutely fine so let's keep our eyes on that open tx stuff i'll put a link down below now although i talked about the fact that this is uh, capable of a two what output has an internal fan to try and keep it at 45 degrees internally so as it gets hot it will exhaust hot air out of the side um, it is limited to 20 db uh, in release mode unless you're using the developer firmware on it and that's going to be about 100 milliwatts a little bit of playing in here i think three four kilometers potentially on that kind of power levels will be very achievable and that's the kind of range that you get on one of the other long range systems running 868 or 915 at about 25 milliwatts with decent antennas so definitely being able to overlap with some of those other longer range systems couple of things to be aware of though with the new protocol that's on here unfortunately um, it won't work with the older fly sky protocols so if you're using uh, the latest and greatest stuff so i'm guessing it's like you know having crossfire receivers and regular uh, 2.4 gig receivers you kind of going to have to have that same idea in mind unfortunately you can't put this in your radio and then talk to all the fly sky receivers it's going to be either or but if you pop this in the back of something like a radio master then potentially you could use this for those uh, conditions where you want a slightly longer range and then use the internal multi-protocol module for other fly sky free sky or whatever receivers it's a bit sad there isn't telemetry in ppm mode that means that i can't test it on some of the radios that i really like but really interested to see how this develops over the next coming months the support in open tx once that's added so we can have the bi-directional telemetry back into the radio is going to really unlock the door for this module and uh, although at right now i can't see it being a t contender for something like crossfire crossfire with the crsf the telemetry and all the extra goodies like the tbs cloud and stuff that's a, that whole ecosystem that crossfire is part, part of uh, but i can definitely see this being something that will give fr sky real worries for the r9m system in the testing that I've done here, the last comment I'll make is that I was a bit worried that with a 2.4 gig system, uh, it wouldn't be able to penetrate in the same way that those lower wavelengths that things like the Crossfire and R9 use. Now, I tr don't try and fly behind stuff anyway, but in the little bit of testing I've done here, it doesn't seem to be as badly affected in terms of dropout as some of the other 2.4 gig systems, uh, the traditional ones that we play with, things like the D16 mode from FreeSky and others. And I don't know whether that's to do with the way that the LoRa technology is working. But I think time will tell how well it actually works. So if you have any questions about this um, or things you'd like to see me cover, do pop them in comments down below and I'll make a supplementary video, collect all those questions together and uh, try and answer as many as I can. I do need to say a big thank you to Fly Sky for being so patient with me with all my questions while I'm playing with this technology. This is a really interesting piece of technology. I haven't had a module like this in my hands for quite a while. And once the support in things like OpenTX uh, really expand the number of radios that we can use it for bi-directionally with telemetry, it's going to be a really interesting module to watch. Thank you for watching my video and watching right to the very end. If you want to find out what I'm currently working on, you can follow me on social media by searching for Painless360 in the usual places. If you'd like to become part of the inner circle, then you can become a Patreon. Details are in the description and you get lots of additional benefits. Check out the playlist section on the channel too. I organize all of my videos into playlists and it's called something like Introduction to Author Beginners. All of the content is aimed so that you can start at the very beginning and it teaches you that subject, starting with simple principles and moving up to teach you everything you need to know.